Growing up, people always ask you, what do you want to be? And I never really had an answer. It's kind of weird to dream of work and that the answer has to be a job or a career, not who you want to be as a person. And I just wanted to get out of the four walls of work, of school, of the forced daily structures and, and just break out, not be stuck doing one thing for the rest of my life. I feel like a lot of people feel those things. Not everyone can feed that desire and it's partly because it can be hard to know how to. That's why I'm making this video, and that's why I helped co-author the free ebook by Project Van Life, How Nomads Make Money on the Road, with a list of more than 100 jobs you can do to get started living on the road full-time. So this is a topic I'm very excited to dive more into today, and I hope you find something that resonates with you. All right, let's start with flexible staffing marketplaces. These are companies that will connect one-time jobs with people like us who maybe just want to have a few hours on any random given day to be able to take a job and earn some extra money. There's actually a website called Upwork that has been known to earn people up to six figures. One option I really like is called Instawork and they offer daily, temporary, and flexible jobs that you can take that have an average pay of $17.38 an hour, which is so great, as well as I believe they offer same day pay. So if you're low on cash, it could be a really great quick option. And the jobs are so simple. You just go in for a few hours, you leave and you never come back. Some even actually include meals as well, which is super awesome, especially for us nomads. So as well as when you're doing that, if you want to know how fast you can really get into a job like that, when I applied for Instawork, it took me about two days to get my application approved that I could be able to start searching through jobs and apply to my very first one. And for me personally, this is a lot better than something like DoorDash or Uber Eats because one, I'm paying for a lot of gas in a vehicle that this one only gets 16 miles per gallon, I believe. It might be like 17 or 18, something like that. Um, so it really adds up quickly as well as you're putting mileage on your vehicle that you want to use that mileage to be able to go travel, right? So for me, DoorDash and Uber Eats isn't really an option, but being able to drive for one time and make that instant, you know, $160, that instant $80, whatever job you're taking forever long you're taking it for, that just seemed like a better option to me. So if you're going to do Uber Eats or you're going to do something like that, look into your mileage, the gas, how much money you're really going to be making at the end of the day. So number Number two is probably the simplest option because you don't have to get out of your comfort zone. You don't need to have any special skill. It's probably a process you're already comfortable with as well as a steady paycheck. And it's what I did for my first two years of van life. This might blow your mind, but you can travel with a nine to five. And I don't mean conventional travel and I don't mean, oh, on the weekends, I'm going to go on a road trip. I mean, a more in-depth for me, it's a beautiful kind of travel where you really get to know the communities that you're traveling to. So there are places all over the country that I really want to go to and I want to learn about. And I just feel like two weeks isn't enough for that to really get engrossed and know the community. Like I want to go and live in Forks, Washington and pretend like I'm Bella from Twilight. No shame. That's a weird dream that I have. <laughs> you get a job and you meet the locals and you're going somewhere it's a tourist destination every single day for a month or two like you really get to see a beautiful side of that community and up until the job that i have now that's what i was doing for years like i dropped out of college and i moved to disney world and then i would on the, like on my days off i would take like a week off and i would just kind of travel around and see what there was in that area and i got to learn about disney world i got like the most intense backstage tour the first place i moved full-time in my van was was Waterbury, Vermont, and I was living in my van at Walmart for six months while I was working at the original Ben & Jerry's factory. It was super cool. I got to meet Ben at one point. Um, he came in and insulted our shop, and I was like, who does this guy think he is? And then they were like, yeah, that's Ben. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, eventually I got bored of that job, and I just kind of was over it, and I said, all right, time to move on. And so I quit there. I had enough money saved up to travel for a few months, so I lived in New York City, and then after a few months when I was like, I need a job again, I looked at jobs online and I got a job as an actress in the Salem Witch Dungeon in Massachusetts throughout Halloween, which was, I don't think I will ever top that job ever. Every day I was literally skipping to work. I was so excited to get there. I was an actress on stage in a recreation of the original Salem Witch Trials. And after that, um, we would actually, and we were all tour guides as well as actresses. So I would also give a tour of this recreation of the Salem Witch Dungeon. And sometimes in between shifts, um, like whatever, you know, your turn was, you could go into this, what we call a scare cell and you could jump out and scare people. And I got paid to literally, I cannot count how many men have told me that they peed their pants because I scared them. I just peed a little, is that all right? <laughs> I'm like, I got paid to do that. <laughs> it was so much fun. I loved the job so much. And the thing is, 
with the Salem witch trials, there is just so much information out there that isn't true but when you live there you learn from the locals the people who have you know heard every story and know what's really true and so it wasn't just a you know a two-hour tour where i was going to learn one person's opinion i was learning everything about the trials and it was fascinating but i digress my point is just think about what you want to do where you want to go what do you want to learn you know what do you want to be immersed in that's a great option for nine to five and even if you don't want to do that kind of thing if tourist jobs aren't for you a normal nine to five works as well right because even if you're working a nine to five part-time because you can afford to do that because you're living in your van and you're saving money you're able to travel then on the weekend and here are some really great webs great wait websites you can look at for finding cool jobs online that you can travel and learn more about a community in. So next is house sitting and dog sitting. And maybe this isn't enough money or hours for you to be able to fully support yourself off of, but it's a great option to do the mixing and matching I was talking about in the beginning. So maybe one week you're having kind of a down week where being in van life is getting hard, you're starting to feel claustrophobic, you just want a break. House sitting is a great way instead of paying for a hotel for you to actually make money while taking that break. So this is Harris and he does this full time with his partner and they make about 23,000 a year between the both of them. But they're also freelance translators and they actually bring in about 400 to 1,200 a month doing that as well. So again, that's the mix and matching idea. And while he does just home to home to home, what you can do is you can kind of travel around and, you know, once you get to a spot, you know, just leave your van outside for a little while and then once you're done, move on. And here are some great websites that you can look at and try options online. So the next one is kind of the reverse of that, which is if you already have a home or an apartment, you can rent it out or use it as an Airbnb to make some easy cash. Plus, if you ever want a break, you can go back there, rent out your camper van while you're there, make money that way. It's just a really great, easy way to make money. All right, so this next one is also a great way to take advantage of something that you're already doing. Road tripping, driving far distances. There is a very cool new app that I actually just discovered yesterday, where if you are road tripping, let's say from Nashville to Philadelphia, you can look up in their app people who are trying to ship things from that area to that area, anything along that line as well. Basically, you'd pick it up and you drop it off for them. So you make money by kind of being like a shipping service, which is super cool. So anytime that you go on a longer road trip, you can look up in their app, point A to point B, and make money just by taking that road trip, by doing something that you're already doing. It's a great way to make some extra cash to pay for that gas that you'll be using. All right, this next one, I need you to hear me out before you're like, that's not fast, all right? It, <laughs> okay, if you wake up and you grind, it can be fast, but you gotta put the work in. If you really utilize the talents and skills that you already have, if you're just selling on Poshmark or Depop or Etsy, and you're not really making your own website, if you are just creating and you're putting the time in, it does not have to be hard, I promise. So I've had two small businesses. The first was I was hand painting denim jackets, and the second I make and sell custom safety key chains. They look like this, they're super cute. Um, <laughs> and they really didn't take a long time to put together. So the, for the first one, I just made a few jackets and I posted them up on Depop or Poshmark and then they just kind of sold on their own. So it's kind of, once you make the art, they're just kind of selling on their own time. With these, I make custom orders actually. So I have a bunch of different ones up on the site and people can mix and match what they want. And I have all of this inventory in the van, I have two storage containers underneath my bed. I will say though, this has not ever been my full 100% how I only make money. It's been a great way for me to say to myself, oh, I want to go somewhere extra. I'm going to promote more and I'm going to sell more keychains to make some extra money for fun. Um, so I would say if you're going to do this and you want to do it full time, then you really got to advertise on social media, etc. Next is use your skills. Maybe you don't want to start a small business, but you can still use a freelancing website. Something that I've bought a lot of work from is Fiverr, a great place that maybe you are a writer, maybe you are a photographer, maybe you are into digital art, maybe you can do voiceovers or uh, there's just so many different options of ways you can make money if you hone in on that skill and it can be all digital, all online, all in your own timing. Another option is to ask your employer if you can take your job completely digital, completely virtual. During COVID, this was a very common thing that companies have now thought through. They have more options for people to be able to work this way. If not in your current job, could they switch you to a job where you could be more virtual? Or if you work in a place like a Walmart or a restaurant or a chain store, maybe you can transfer somewhere else to a different store and kind of use that other idea I was talking about, about how you can work a nine to five and still be able to travel. All right, this next one is a all right, this next one is a bit of a tip, a bit of a list of jobs. Um, here's a few, and there's gonna be a full list in the ebook in the description of this video. It has 101 jobs you can look at. What I wanna say about these jobs is when you see them, you've probably heard them before, none of them look fun to me. Um, 
But if I was looking at my life again and I was saying, I want to get into van life, I could take one of these jobs until I do find something that I'm passionate about. If you just want to get out there and you want to get on the road, take one of these simple, easy jobs for a while. Wake up in the morning, do your work for a few hours, and then wake up at the Grand Canyon, you know, go out and enjoy. The next morning, wake up in the Rockies, you know. If your job isn't perfect at first, that's okay. It can be a process. I kind of want to encourage you that if it's not perfect, but it's good, try the good until you find the best. All right, and number 10 is social media. And I know what you're thinking. Give me a moment, I'll explain. It can be fast. And here's what you're, th here's probably where that miscommunication is coming. A lot of people think that you have to have 50,000 followers plus to be able to make money on social media, but that's not true. Brands work with smaller pages. And so I really implore you that if you are trying to make money through social media and you're still having smaller numbers to reach out to companies, one, it doesn't hurt to ask, right? Like you'll never know if you don't ask, but two, I have seen it happen over and over again. So I promise you it is possible to make money on social media with a smaller following. All right, that was number 10. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section where they go. And I'll try to get back to as many as I can. I want to leave you just with one final thing, which is that I hope that this inspires you to kind of take the first step. I know that that first step is the scariest part when I'm talking to people who are becoming van lifers. It's that first scary step of just applying to a new job or, you know, committing to something new. And I hope that, you know, you can take that step today. You know, you don't, you don't need to watch a million videos. If you just take that first scary step, it'll get you so far. And that's what I hope for you today.